Hey guys, welcome back to another just tutorials. In the last video, we did a bit of things about how to destroy a session and how to log a person out of the system. In this one, we'll be uh, tackling a bit more advanced concept on, about passwords, which is hashing. Hashing is a very important thing that every application must do if it's handling passwords or any um, that kind of information. Passwords reveal a lot of information about the user, and they are very risky things to have. So if you if your user trusts us with their password, then that means that they have trusted us, and they have trust that we will keep it secure. Um, as you saw before, I don't have that information in the database anymore because I cleared it out because I was testing something and I had to clear it out. Um, we used to store passwords in plain text, which is absolutely not acceptable because if our system gets hacked or if an information gets leaked, then everyone can see the passwords. And most people, I know everyone says, oh, my system's secure, I keep different passwords, all lies. Uh, there are only very few people um, who would have, or who might have, different passwords for different systems, but the majority of us have um, groups, we group systems by passwords, so we have the same password for social networks or something, or something like, something like that, or whatever. Um, um, but it is, again, it's a good practice to have separate passwords for separate systems, but most of us do this because it's easier to remember. Anyway, um, our responsibility as uh, service providers is to make sure that we take care of their um, asset, which is password, in a very meaningful way and in a way that um, in a way that means that we can secure it from prying eyes. To do this, there's a technique called hashing. If you don't know about hashing, check out the Wikipedia page on on uh, password hash or hashing or whatever it's called. Uh, it's pretty useful. It's got a lot of detail on how it works and that kind of stuff. And the main view is in hashing, you take a string, you hash it, which is which means you run it by a hash algorithm, and that makes and that makes and that converts it into a piece, an, a, another piece of string. Uh, but using the another string, you cannot rerun it through the hashing algorithm to get the original string. You can never ever get the original string, not easily from the actual hash string. This is very useful um, because um, it makes it easier for people to, well, it, it, it makes security easier. Now, in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, because we're using Mongoose and to make our lives easy, we're going to use a thing called uh, Mongoose method of writing, binding, whatever it's called. Now this is a piece of code that I've uh, taken from Stack Overflow, uh, which is really, really useful site if you've got any questions or anything. It's amazing, but this is a piece of code that I've taken. So let's go through it quickly. First thing that you'll notice that I've copied is a bcrypt thing. Uh, this is a library that allows you to encrypt or decrypt um, information. It also allows hashing and that kind of stuff as well. It's very powerful, very cool. I would highly recommend you check out the actual uh, page on it. So uh, actual help page on the Infinite site on it, what it does and how it works, and all kinds of things that it, things that it provides. But that's basically bcrypt, and we're going to use it for this example. There's also a thing called salt work factor. This is a this is a property of bcrypt. Uh, again, if you check out bcrypt, you'll know what that does. Uh, the higher it is, the more secure your hash is. Um, the lower it is, the less secure it is. Ten, ten to twelve is normally the sweet spot, I think. In my experience, but you can use whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. Uh, the second thing is this thing, which, which we are going to shamelessly copy. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to pretend that I know that, know how it works out of, out of the box because I copied it from, from Stack Overflow. And in every project that I've done, I've kind of copied it, I think, so and pasted it. I have changed it to fit my own thing, but it, that's basically how it is. Um, we're saying that you know the save function in Mongoose, which is you do object.save. We're saying just before it, so pre save, run this function and give me the next function to call so that I can uh, tell you to move ahead. We're saying if it's not modified, if the password property of user is not modified, then just continue on to the next function. If it is modified, then continue on to the code. Generate the salt using the salt work, fa salt work factor. And then once the salt is generated, uh, give us the salt in the callback method, and then uh, hash the password. So bcrypt hash user password with our salt, 
and then once the hashing is done, give us the hash in our callback function. And then we'll uh, override the clear text password that was assigned with the hash, and then we're going to move on next. That's basically what it is. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the compare password thing, which, is, which goes here. Compare password is basically we're checking the password that's provided and we're saying um, compare it and then check if it's matched and then call, uh, execute the callback with whether or not it's matched. That's it. That's basically what it is. Very simple. So let's save that and let's go back to index.js. Now, this the override for save means that we won't have to change our registration to fit hashing because as soon as, even though we are assigning plain text here because of the way this works, because of the way it overrides it, this will be a hash when it, by the time it reaches the database. Uh, but we will have to change login to make login work. Now let's go ahead without changing login and see kind of what it does and how it works. Oh, also make sure that you install bcrypt by using npm uh, install minus minus save bcrypt. Right, so let's restart npm and let's register a new user. So because I've blanked the database, uh, we're just going to create a new user called Mouth and with password man, password123 uh, for my account. So I register 200 OK. Let's check it out. Um, fine, pretty. Now here it is. So if you recall, or if you go back to one of the previous videos and scrub through and find the frame where you can see the password. Previously, the password was stored as password123, which is clear text, which means if a hacker got his hands on to our system, he will be able to see all the passwords very clearly without having to put any effort in actually finding out anything, basically. And he will also be able to then hack into other systems and will cause a lot of havoc for our users, and our users will not be pleased. To make our to keep our users secure, we need to hash the passwords, and this is exactly what our change has done. Our password is now two a ten blah 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 blah. It's a very long string, um, which basically is a hash string. This is a hash, which means that a hacker can't get to the original string, original password one two three, because it's hashed. Now let's log in with our new system. Check out the login password one two three. Log in. Four of them not found. Oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? <laughs> because we haven't implemented the login yet. We haven't implemented the proper login yet. Let's do that. Again, stealing some of the code from here. If we go down, user.compare password. Um, this. Basically, what this is doing is it's just. Uh, oops, having problems. It's just saying that user object dot compare password, and then passing the password that has it provided to us by the user and then it basically um, executes this callback function and found callback or not found callback, whatever, yeah. Um, and we're just going to have to move this code to go into the callback. So if it's found, then assign it to the session and then return 200 and everything's okay, else uh, return Else return for a one unauthorized. Well, actually, yeah, so just return for unauthorized. Yep. So uh, compare method, compare password. If you recall, is this method, which is use schema dot methods dot compare password, and you're passing in the candidate password with a callback. The candidate password in this case is the password object, which contains the value from the request of body dot password, and a callback is this callback. And we're saying if match is true, then send two hundred else send 401. That's it. Save that. Restart npm. Uh, go back to postman and then log in again. This time... Uh, oh, it's Manthan, sorry. This time... It should work. It's not working. Interesting. Um, oh, yes, we need to remove password here. Because we are not, we, we're, we're going to query our username and then we're going to compare the password afterwards. So, um, yeah, so my bad. 
uh, log in again. Boom, 200 OK. Excellent. This means that we were able to successfully compare the password. Just in case, to make sure that this is not a fluke, we're going to put the make the password one, which we just added a small extinguishing mark there. Um, and we're going to do that. And then it says 401 un unauthorized. So you are logged in, my friend. Oops. Not bad. <laughs> uh, and just to make sure that you can also access the dashboard resource, which is welcome to Super Secret API. And you can also log out, and then you can try accessing the Super Secret resource again, and you have no access because you have been locked out. <laughs> so that's it, guys. This is our very simple authentication system with MongoDB. This is not quite simple anymore because we've got hashing and we've got other stuff in, but you can totally use this in your application if you want, if you have your own database, if you want to uh, manage users yourself. This is totally what you can use. Uh, it's pretty cool um, the way it works. Um, and have fun with it, I guess. Um, I'll see you guys later in the next tutorial. Bye.